Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to section 6.7 on assets, bases, and indicators. This is the first video of four. Now, as we go into our talk on assets and bases, I want to first want to touch on definitions. Now, the definitions of assets and bases come from three different perspectives. The first perspective that we're going to be talking about is one that we've kind of already hit on, and that's with Arrhenius assets and bases. This comes from a guy named Savant Arrhenius. He said that acids make H plus ions in aqueous solution. So when you take an acid, you dissolve it in water, you have H plus ions present. And that H plus is kind of evident in our chemical formulas for acids. You know, we all of them start with hydrogens. And that's just a reminder that there are H plus ions in solution. An example of that is when hydrochloric acid, it's a gas, dissolves in water, and <clears throat> when you form that aqueous solution, you get H plus an aqueous solution and Cl minus an aqueous solution. That HCl dissociates into H plus and HCl. Now this H plus here, this is a very simplified terminology. In reality, so we use H plus because it is simple. In reality, the hydrogen ion H plus immediately attaches to a water molecule, creating something called hydronium. It's a hydronium ion and its formula is H3O one plus. So the example is here. As soon as this hydrochloric acid dissociates and you get H plus, this H plus bonds with a water molecule. And the example is here. So H plus an aqueous solution bonds with a water molecule, water is liquid, and it forms H3O one plus, hydronium. So when we talk about H plus, what we're really saying, and we're really talking about, what we're really referring to is hydronium. But to make it simple, we simply say H+. The complete equation is hydrochloric acid reacts with water, or basically is added to water, to form a solution of hydronium, HGO+, and your chloride ion. That's an Arrhenius acid. Now, an Arrhenius base is said to form OH- ions in solution. It's here at the top. So when you put a base, which usually consists of a metal and a hydroxide ion, into solution, it dissociates into a metal cation and hydroxide, which is a, has a one minus charge. An example of that would be an AOH solid dissolved in water. You dissociate that in AOH into Na plus an aqueous solution and OH minus an aqueous solution. Now, over time, scientists extended their definitions of acids and bases beyond Arrhenius' definitions of acids and bases. That brought us to our second, or that brings us to our second definition. It's called a Bronston, Bronsted Lowry acid and base definition. This comes from two scientists, one named Johannes Bronsted and Thomas Lowry. Put that together, you have the Bronsted Lowry theory of acids and bases. They said that acids are H plus ions, you know or proton donors. They said the bases are H plus or proton acceptors. You might be saying, well, wait, protons? What do you mean protons? We're talking about hydrogen here. You're right, we are. Now, H plus, let's take a, take a closer look at what that means. So acids, H plus donors. Bases are H plus acceptors. Now, let's look at hydrogen. An atom of hydrogen has a central nucleus here, represented by a small circle. In my nucleus, I have protons and neutrons, and around it, I have my electrons, of course. Hydrogen has an atomic number of one, so it has one proton. With an atomic number of one and a mass of one, it has no neutrons. Around it, around this nucleus, I have one electron that hydrogen has. This is just electrically neutral elemental hydrogen, an atom of hydrogen. Now, when this hydrogen reacts, in the case of, let's say, hydrochloric acid, this hydrogen has its ele valence electron taken by a chlorine atom. This hydrogen then forms H+, plus. this chlorine forms Cl-, minus, and they stick together through electrostatic interaction or attraction, and then they don't dissociate until they're put in water. Now, this H+, plus, let's talk about how that's formed. So... <clears throat> Once this electron is given to this chlorine, we can think about this electron cloud being taken away because there's only a one electron there. Once this one electron 
leaves, we get this, a nucleus that simply holds one proton and no neutrons. So essentially all this is is a proton and this is a hydrogen ion known as H+. So H+, essentially, essentially excuse me, is just a proton. That's why in our definition of Bronsted Lowry acids and bases, we call the H pluses protons that are being donated or accepted. Our third definition is called a Lewis acid or a Lewis base. This comes from a scientist called Gilbert Lewis. Is this the same Lewis of Lewis structures? Yes, it is. So acids. Lewis says that an acid is an electron pair, or we know them as lone pair, acceptors. Acids are electron pair acceptors. And bases are electron pair donors. Now, this makes more sense when we look at Lewis structures, hence the name Gilbert Lewis. Now, an example of this would be when H plus reacts with water to form hydronium. We saw this reaction on the first board when we talked about um, it not just being H plus, but it really being H3O plus, hydronium. Now, let's look at this in Lewis structure form. So I have H plus, and it's bonding with or being reacted or added to water. Now, water has two lone pairs here. These lone pairs are going to reach out and grab this H plus. And when they do, you can think of it as them donating their lone pair electrons to this H plus. Since these are donating their lone pair electrons or unbonded electrons, we know that it is a Lewis base. Since this hydrogen ion is accepting these lone pair electrons, it is our Lewis acid. And when that happens, we get hydronium. We have our Lewis acid and our Lewis base reacting together to form hydronium. Another example is here. We have sulfur trioxide reacting with water, forming sulfuric acid. Now, here we have this Lewis structure here. It's the sulfur attached to three oxygens, double bonded each site. These oxygens here are already satisfied. Sulfur is oversatisfied, but it can do that. It can expand its octet. It reacts with water. Water has lone pair electrons here. These lone pair electrons <clears throat> are going to attack this sulfur to bond on and expand sulfur's octet even more. Since these electrons are being donated, this is my Lewis base. Since this Sulfur trioxide is accepting the lone pair electrons. This is my Lewis acid. When that happens, they form sulfuric acid, which has that chemical formula. The take-home message is this. Know that Lewis acids donate electron, sorry, Lewis acids, excuse me, accept electron pairs. And that Lewis bases donate electron pairs. If you don't understand the arrows and the different mechanisms here, that's okay. But know this part here. Lewis acids will accept electrons. Lewis bases will donate. The last bit of information you should know is in general about all acids and bases that pertain to all three definitions that we've gone through is this. Acids react with metal. They have a sour taste. And they're really good conductors, meaning they're great electrolytes. Bases. They don't react with metals. They have a very bitter taste. They're slippery in their feel, like, you know, soap. And they are also very good conductors. So you're going to take notes on this and look forward to your second video.